Hello everyone. Thanks for joining. My name is Apoof Tandon and I am a data and analytics consultant at Thorogood. If you don't know us, Thorogood is a specialist data and analytics consultancy with a focus on data engineering, data science and data visualization. Our approach is rooted in understanding business goals using the capabilities of technology to meet these goals. So customers and business objectives are at the forefront of our approach. In today's brief video, I will be giving an introduction to Power BI data flows, what it is, what are some of its key features, and then a short demo of how to use it and how then how to connect it to Power BI Desktop. So let's get started. Data flows is a web-based self-service data preparation component inside Power BI. So traditionally before, Power BI Desktop gave you an awesome tool like Power Query, which lets you do lightweight extract transform and load so that ETL operations on your data inside a Power BI desktop. The challenge with this was that you tended to bypass the normal centralized data engineering processes that your organization may have. Essentially, with Power BI query inside the Power BI desktop, all the data preparation steps were in your local file. But what if you wanted others to take advantage of it or wanted to use the same steps in multiple files. Enter Power BI data flows. I've highlighted some of the key features of Power BI data flows. Power BI data flows is a fully managed UI based data preparation tool in the cloud, allowing business users to quickly connect to data sources and prepare data using a drag and drop approach. It is a 100% web based tool, allowing users to easily create reusable data integration pipelines that can be used in one or more Power BI reports. Data flows can be shared with users within the organization, removing extra maintenance overhead when a logic changes. Also, integrated well with Azure Active Directory for centralized integration and access management. It can also be leveraged across Power Platform tools like Power Apps, Power Automate, Microsoft Dynamics 365. Another important thing to note here is that the data flows are only available with Pro or Premium version of Power BI service. But if you already have Power BI Pro license or your organization is already under Power BI Premium subscription, data flows are automatically available without any extra charges. Now, let's look at a quick demo of data flows in action. So here I am on the web version, which is Power BI Desktop, and I've created a new workspace for the demo called Data Flows Workspace. As you can see on the right side, I am a Power BI Pro user. So when I click on Next, it will allow me to create the data flows. So let's click on this. Now, data flows, we can create them using four options. Either we can ingest the data from ground up, creating new tables, or we could link it to an existing data flows by linking the data flows in, or import an existing model or even use the common data model folder as well. For this demo, I'll be creating a new table. So we'll click on add new tables. So now it highlights the number of sources that we could connect to ingest the data. There are around 80 plus data sources available. And for this demo, I'll be connecting to a SharePoint folder. And I've already placed a file, which is an Excel file there. So let's go to search, type in SharePoint. We'll click on the SharePoint folder. I will give the path. And you could see it automatically suggested that the same account that I have logged into Power BI service as the authentication account for SharePoint as well. And it is the same. So I'll click next. But you have the option to switch as well. So now again, it has highlighted the file which we just showed in the SharePoint folder. And this is our file. So we'll click on transform data to link it. Now, in order to see what are the different worksheets that are available in the file, we will click on the binary option. And then for this demo, we will be working on the product table. So we will click on table. And as you would notice, as in when I'm selecting the next steps at the top, it diagrammatically tells us what are the different steps we are taking 
So it just kind of gives a good guided analytics view of the various steps of the transformation that we have done with data, as well as giving a summary of the data preview. On the canvas at the top, you could see the different steps that we could do in order to transform the data. We could also click on the plus sign and see the commonly used data transformations. As well as on the right side, we could also see the set of applied steps. The first thing we do generally do is rename it the query to be a better name. So since this is a product file, we name it as product. We can select the previous applied steps by clicking on them and even can delete them if you'd like certain steps to be removed and clicking on the gear option. We can even edit them as well. Now, the first thing we would notice in a file is the column category. So we would see the category has a value mix and after that a lot of nulls. And then again, when the value changes, again a value is populated. So what we could do in order to remove the nulls is we can select the column, go to transform and click fill and fill down because our data provider had provided the data in a way whenever a value of category changed, we had a value populated, but rest were null. So in order to fix that, we just filled it in with the same categories. So now we're good. Again, any step we are doing just gets highlighted in the diagrammatic view and also as in terms of the applied steps on the right side. Now, the second thing we notice is the product column. So in this, we could see the product name and its segment associated with them in a single column, and we would like to split them out. So in order to do that, we'll again select the column. We have the split column option. We will click the option by delimiter. And in this, we will select custom and then give the pipe symbol, which is the separating factor and click OK. So now it has split our columns into the two sections by the delimiter and now we'll quickly change the name. So this was our segment column. In order to rename it, we just double click the header and just type the new name we would like. Now let's look at the third column which is a price. Again, we would notice that price column has both currencies and the retail price in it. And in order for us to do any aggregations, we would ideally like the numerical column and the textual column to be separate. So we'll again select it. And in order to fix it, we'll go to add columns. And in this, this time, instead of using a delimiter to separate it out using a space, we would use another feature called column from examples. Select from selection. And then just type in the first value. And the Park query will automatically suggest what are we trying to do with the sort of column we selected. So it automatically recognized since I have entered the numerical value, we would like to separate the numerical data and automatically gave the header as well, the text after delimiter. Let's make it mark manufacturer suggesting retail price price as the column name and click OK. Yeah, and then in order for us to change the data type because it's a numerical field, we will just click decimal. Again, now since we have the decimal number, we can again select the column and we would like the currencies to be again available to us separately as a column. So we'll do the exact same steps. Column from examples from selection. Type in USD, suggest all the options, update the header name to be currency. Click OK. And now that we have split this price column into its respective retail price and currency, we no longer need the column. So we'll select the column and in this time we'll click on plus and then we'll utilize the common listed options, remove columns. And now we think we are happy with the data. We have done the all the transformations that we wanted to. We can see the different steps that it is highlighted. So what we would do is we'll just click save and close. Save it. We will give a proper name. Product. 
dimension workflow save it and click refresh so now that what that would do is it'll try to run all the set of steps we have applied on the whole data set we can see the refresh in progress by coming back to our workspace and we can see that the refresh is in progress let's give a second or two and now in order to connect this data flow to our power bi we will click on a new power bi desktop power bi data flows is a connector available in power bi we click on it and it will start suggesting the list of workspaces that i have access to which have works power bi workflows in it so we have created our product dimension workflow we could see the transform data in the preview and we'll quickly load it and then we can quickly start creating visualization so let's see currency by retail price and it'll just start building the chart if we go back to the data flow and edit edit tables and let's say there, there has been a new requirement that we would like to delete the manufacturer id because this column is no longer required so what we do in a centralized way is just come to the data flow select the column right click remove columns and then save it it'll analyze we again click refresh so that the whole it gets the all the steps get applied to the whole data set we wait for a couple of seconds for the data to be updated yeah it's done and now if we come here and click refresh you'd see the manufacturer id column just goes and if this particular data flow was being used at n number of power bi reports whenever we have singly changes the logic it will get applied on all the reports in addition to the traditional data flows demo which i showed microsoft has also announced a public preview of streaming data flows in power bi to help users perform analytics on streaming and real time data currently it's only a power bi premium component though but it allows authors to perform data preparation on continuous streaming data while still maintaining drag and drop no code experience of conventional data flows it supports two data inputs at the moment azure event hubs and azure internet of thing hubs thank you again for joining me today if you have any questions or are interested to learn more please don't hesitate to reach out to me via my email id or linkedin have a nice day